about fundraising and three easy steps to fundraising success. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Olivieri. I'm a former executive director, uh, nonprofit business strategist, creator of the Impact Method, and best-selling author. So let's dive right in, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the three steps on the very first slide, and then I'm going to show you the magic of these three steps. And I'm going to give you some bonus, six bonus tips on how to make these three steps work even better. So what are they? Increase your number of donors. Step one. Step two, increase the average donation. And step three, increase the donation frequency. I'd love to know for those of you who are here live or if you're watching the recording, put it in the chat. Which of all three of these have you or are you currently working on? Let's call them A, B, and C. A is increased number of donors. B is increased average donation. And C is increased the donation frequency. Are you work currently working on A, B, C, or all three of them or two of them? Lynn, awesome, is working on A and B, excellent. Um, yes, working on all three, working on all three. I love it. So let me show you for those of you who, maybe some of you aren't working on any of them, hopefully though, at least you're working on one of them. Today, I wanna show you why it's so important that you are working on all three. So. Right, let's just, we'll use some simple numbers here. Don't worry, I've done all the math for you. So if you're not a math person, that's okay. Um, so let's say we have 500 donors. That's a solid but modest list for many organizations um, that our average donation is $50 per donation. And the frequency of, average frequency of giving per donor is two times, let's call that per year. Right, so then we would be looking at generating about $50,000 in fundraising revenue. So what happens if we try to make um, a small increase? Yes, some of you are small and these might be big numbers for you, but the magic works here regardless of the numbers that you have. So even if you only have two donors, and I've worked with an organization who maybe had one donor, but she might have passed away, but they weren't sure. <laughs> so it's okay if you're there. If you're there at maybe one donor, this works for you too, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one if you want to. Um, so, but the math works regardless of the size of these numbers. So if we make a 10% increase, that's pretty doable. You know, you can increase to get 10% better, go from 500 to 550 donors, from an average donation of 50 to just 55. How much harder is it to give have people give on average just $5 more per gift. And increasing, this isn't even a whole person, a 10% increase, sorry, a whole um, from two times a year to 2.2 times a year. Um, now, but what I want you to see is if we increase just 10% in all three areas, the total increase, and here's the magic number, is a 33% increase in revenue right? That is an exponential return on putting energy. Now, if you made a 30% increase in just one of these areas, one, that would be a lot harder than a 10% increase across all three. And two, you would be only 30% better, not 33% better. So it's important to be working on increasing across all three areas because the returns are exponential. Let me take this a step farther. Now in our bottom row here, I've added on. So let's say, okay, our original number is 550 and two, right? 500 donors, $50 per donation, two donations a year. Let's say I've, you know, I've got some more realistic logic here. Let's say I can do an 
50% increase in my list. I'm going to go from 500 donors to 750 donors. That's a push, but that's certainly doable with some, some effort in thinking about how we're going to do that. And let's say I also increase the average donation by 25%. Now, the little better marketing, a little better messaging, maybe I have um, some more specific campaigns I'm running. This is a reasonable percentage increase to expect if you're focusing on doing just that and increasing the donation frequency from two to three, which is a 50% increase. Um, and that's, you know, maybe you just added in Giving Tuesday. So you have like an, an annual campaign in the winter, a summer appeal, and you have an extra kind of special fundraising day that you're trying to get people to really give on. What's our total percentage increase overall in revenue? That represents a 281% increase in revenue. And that is the exponential, or as Jay Abraham would say, geometric increase um, in revenue returns by focusing on all three um, areas. So for those of you who are doing all three, you should be going, yes, 281% or whatever your percentage is um, that you're getting a return on what's fairly reasonable activities. For those of you who are only working on two, I hope that this was your aha moment to say, wow, if we worked on all three of these areas, our results would be exponentially better. So how do we improve all three areas? Well, here are six tips around improving on those three areas. Communication, improving the way you communicate with your donors can have a big impact on especially that middle number um, and that second number, so B and C. So the middle number of what is the average donation they're making. If you communicate the value of your organization better or you communicate the value of the work you do as being even more significant, you could certainly increase the amount of money that people are donating. Donating Communication too is really great for frequency of donation. A lot of nonprofits struggle by just not asking. They just don't ask frequently enough. So communication is really important. Um, your model of giving, right? That's another area where you could really improve. So what is it that people kind of perceive they're even giving for? How do you approach making the ask? Are you doing campaigns? Are you doing galas? Is it more transactional? Are you building, you know, strategic relationships with larger donors? Are you doing multiple activities, right? Maybe you're adding in, you've got your major donors and you're adding in your bequests. So have multiple multiple models or just change your model. A lot of people are still doing the kind of gala or fundraising event approach, which is not necessarily the most effective, sustainable um, model. So you might be able to do more by changing models, but certainly if you have the capacity to add an additional model, that's really a great way to go. Strategy. What's your overall strategy? Are you approaching it by the calendar year? In March, we're doing this. In April, we're doing that. In January, we're doing this. Or are you really thinking about the donor relationship journey and building, you know, connecting all the dots so that somebody gets to know that you exist, gets to feel comfortable with your organization, makes a donation, gives, you know, keeps giving more, and then even bringing new donors into the fold. So there's the specific tactics you're doing in your strategy, but also what are the goals in your strategy? And sometimes changing goals can really have a big impact across all three areas um, of the three levers of giving. Um, I think a special one here is for those of you where people might be only giving a couple, you know, once or twice a year, you might have a strategy that's very calendar-based and you're only really asking once or twice a year, but maybe you could focus on a monthly giving strategy and really shift uh, that we're always in need, we're always here um, and asking and giving reasons to give year round. 
your segment, right? Who are these donors you're going after? Are you going after the best segment? Could you be adding a new segment of donors? Of course, I'm a huge advocate. You do what you are capable of doing now, and then you grow from there. Don't try to take on multiple segments. If you're very, very small, just get good at one. Um, what are your resources? Is your, is your budget it doesn't have approval in it already to invest in growing your own fundraising department. A lot of boards get scared and they don't want to reinvest in this or it doesn't seem very attractive to donors. Although I've got to tell you, it should be attractive to donors because donors want to get a good return. And if they said, wow, I could give $50 and it would turn into another $50 year over year, by supporting the fundraising activities overall, or I could give $50 to this program and I would have $50 of impact one time, not every single year. So I think that's really an important story that actually could be part of your communication, right? What are you, how are you explaining the impact of people's gifts to them? Um, and my sixth tip here is culture. What is the culture in your organization amongst your donors? Is it a community of giving? Is there a sense that we're all involved with this? Um, or is that something you could strengthen? Could you be bringing more people into the fold? And what is your thinking around giving? Are your donors part of your community? Are they some sort of like cherished group that you're also scared of their opinion? So there are many more ways than this, but I hope that these six help you think, get your minds going in this short micro training about how you can start influencing all three levers of fundraising and exponentially increase your financial returns so that you can make a bigger impact. For those of you who would like to get on a call with me one-on-one, -on -one, you're welcome to go to pivotground.com forward slash apply for a free consultation. Otherwise, if and when you're watching the recording, I hope you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get notifications if you want to know when we add another training. Thank you so much. And now we're going to turn it over to those who've joined live to get some Q&A.